Good morning, everyone. It's a pleasure to uh, welcome everyone to the eighth meeting here for calendar year 2014. But before we uh, commence with public meeting, uh, we have some future public utility commissioners in the room here this morning. And I uh, want to first start off by recognizing their moms and dads, uh, because for without your moms and dads, you wouldn't be here. Uh, but more importantly, I think Commissioner Cawley set it up nicely. Um, your moms and dads uh, do tremendous work for this Commonwealth and this Commission. And uh, they spend a lot of valuable time making sure we get ready for what we have to do here today as public utility commissioners. And um, we're very proud of them. We know you're very proud of them. We're also very proud to have you here today to celebrate, not only in public meeting, and don't get the, the, uh, the idea that just because this thing goes rather quickly that we're not doing our work on behalf of the 12.3 million citizens of Pennsylvania, as I look out to Mr. Henderson from Governor Corbett's office, who's joined us as a special guest. Um, but uh, again, it's, uh, it's an honor to have you here. Uh, you're going to have a great day here in, uh, in Harrisburg. I also want to recognize uh, Lisa Coley and everybody who's part of this organization who helps organize today's events. Now, I, I have to give a quick disclaimer. The Palson children are not here, and they're not here because they missed too many days of school. And um, we've been biting our fingernails. We might, uh, we're hoping that the grades are going to be okay. I might need a reprieve, Patrick, from the governor uh, to get them over the top. So I'm only kidding. My wife would. She's in Pittsburgh this morning. She would not be happy with me saying that. But uh, we, uh, we again, want to welcome you. And at the end of the public meeting this morning, I'm going to draw. I'm going to let the vice chairman. I'm going to turn the bucket over to him, and he's going to draw the lucky name to adjourn public meeting. And if you're, if we get really, you know, if there's a, if it seems warlike up here, you can use this and hit one of us. Just, just kidding there. So let's get back to being serious. It's, um, it's the eighth meeting of the Public Utility Commission for calendar year 2014, and the first item on this morning's agenda is the approval of the minutes from the March 20th public meeting, and I want to recognize <laughs> Vice Chairman, thank you. We almost got ahead of ourselves here. We start with the Pledge of Allegiance at every public meeting. Please join us. <laughs> Thank you, Vice Chairman. He's having a uh, junior moment there. Uh, and with that, I want to recognize you as the editor of the minutes of the March 20th public meeting. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I have reviewed the minutes of our March 20th, 2014 public meeting, and I move that they be approved as presented. Second. Any discussion? Any objections? Hearing none, the minutes are approved to submit it. It's a pleasure to welcome to the podium to begin our public meeting, Ms. Cheryl Walker Davis. Good morning, Cheryl. Good morning, Mr. Chairman. Good morning, Commissioners. Good morning. Good morning. May it please this honorable commission, um, we would note for the children that on the various pages of the agenda are different cases that come before the commission and the recommendations of different commission bureaus with regard to those cases. And so what we're recommending is that the commission adopt the bureau recommendations pertaining to the various matters that come before the commission. With that having been said, we'll start with matters on behalf of the Bureau of Audits. It is recommended that the commission adopt the Bureau of Audit's recommendation with regard to the release of audit reports for UGI Utilities Inc. Gas Division and UGI Utilities Electric Division, the first three items on page three. So moved. Second. Any discussion? Any objections? Hearing none, the motion passes unanimously. That was the first three items on page one. With regard to the last item on page one, Pertaining to the management efficiency investigation of Equitable Gas Company, we recommend the adoption of the staff report, uh, of the staff recommendation to release that report as well as the implementation plan, noting the joint statement of you, Mr. Chairman, and Commissioner Cawley. So moved. Second. I'd like to recognize Commissioner Cawley for purposes of our joint statement here this morning. Commissioner Cawley. Thank you, Chairman. Uh, on behalf of you and uh, myself, I make this uh, statement regarding uh, this management efficiency investigation of Equitable Gas Company's progress in implementing 18 of 
uh, original 72 recommendations. Our audit staff uh, concluded uh, their work prior to the merger of Equitable uh, into People's Natural Gas Company, and as a result, the follow-up findings and recommendations uh, were based on conditions that existed prior to the approved merger. The Audit staff found that Equitable Gas Company has effectively or substantially implemented 10 of the 18 recommendations that were reviewed and has taken action on seven uh, of the remaining items and only one item remains outstanding. Uh, among the more notable improvements achieved by the management of Equitable Gas Company are Number one, they developed alternate arrangements for natural gas supply from local Marcellus shale production, resulting in annual cost savings of approximately $13.3 million. Secondly, they have reduced unaccounted for gas levels from 5.8% in 2008 to 5% in 2012, which resulted in annual savings of approximately $750,000. They've begun uh, a staff gas control center with at least two gas controllers per shift. They've increased the capital spending dedicated to accelerated replacement of bare steel mains to levels from $16.3 million in 2008 to an annual average of $19.2 million from 2009 to 2012. The company also plans to remove all small diameter cast iron mains by 2016 and all cast iron mains from the system within nine years. All bare steel should be removed from the system in 32 years or approximately by 2045. The company has an awful lot of bare steel, meaning it's not protected with electric uh, cathodic uh, 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 protection which wards off corrosion in the pipes. And lastly, the company is up <coughs> mapping and capital assets. While these accomplishments are commendable, our staff has identified further improvement opportunities in certain areas. In particular, the company needs to reduce the number of outstanding leaks, especially class two leaks defined as leaks that do not present an immediate hazard but must be acted upon within 14 days based on the leak's probability uh, as a future hazard. Uh, why are leak uh, uh, repairs necessary? Well, uh, leaks not only may lead to explosions, but they also um, uh, means that gas that is paid for by the customers is not getting to the customer in the first place. But it remains a, a business expense which, if prudently managed, uh, is allowed to be passed along to customers. So the Commission is very careful about insisting for at least two very good reasons that, that companies reduce the amount of leaks in their lines. That's not only gas companies but water companies as well. Uh, generally, a reinvestigation must be performed at a set interval regarding particularly class two leaks, and the repair can take place within a year of detection. These class two leak inventories have increased from 740 in 2009 to 961 in April of 2013. That's a 30% increase. And it's the principal reason that the chairman and I are making this statement. We're concerned about that substantial increase in these class two leaks. In addition to the cost associated with lost gas, leaks are, of course, a safety concern that could result in property damage, injuries, or even death. Consequently, the company should make the required capital pipeline investments, exploit all opportunities for operational efficiencies, and continue to utilize new technologies to reduce all outstanding leaks, particularly Class II leaks. Thank you, Chairman. Uh, thank you, Commissioner Colley. Any further comments? 
Uh, Chairman, I also wanted to make note of one of the, uh, the recommendations as, prior, uh, as part of the management audit, and this relates to damage prevention. Uh, the recommendation uh, to Equitable was to strive for best-in-class performance in damage prevention. And at that time, uh, the consultant noted that there was a rising trend in overall line hits, in fact, between the period of 2004 and 2008, line hits had increased by 45 percent. The consultant also noted that uh, there was an uh, elevation of uh, third-party line hits as well as a rising trend in the number of hits per thousand tickets issued to the company. Uh, it is worth noting that the company has made progress in these areas, but uh, we would remind them that these still remain as important priorities going forward. Uh, they are particularly around the areas of line location and mapping. Uh, the current data is suggesting that, uh, that the company has uh, some significant responsibility for a number of those hits going forward, and that we would hope that they would continue to see this as an area for continued improvement. Thank you, uh, Vice Chairman Coleman. Any further discussion? Any objections? Hearing none, the motion is approved unanimously. Turning now to matters presented on behalf of the Office of Special Assistance, commencing on page two of the public meeting agenda, it is recommended that the Commission adopt all of the items on page two, as well as the items appearing on pages three, four, five, except the item in the middle pertaining to the complaint proceeding of Kush Timbalaj versus Philadelphia Gas Works. That matter has been withdrawn by the Bureau. The omnibus continues with the remaining item on page five and, and the items on pages six and seven, concluding with the recommendation in the proceeding involving the petition of Pico Energy Company for alternative energy credits. So moved. Second. Any discussion? Any objections? Hearing none, the motion passes unanimously. With regard to matters presented on behalf of the Bureau of Technical Utility Services, it should be noted that the first item pertaining to strategic energy, doing business as Direct Energy Business LLC, has been postponed until public meeting of May the 22nd. With that having been said, it is recommended that the Commission adopt the staff recommendations, the remaining recommendations appearing on pages 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, noting with regard to Columbia Gas of Pennsylvania that the uh, suspension is through December 20th of 2014 as opposed to November 14th of 2014. The omnibus continues with all of the items appearing on pages 13, 14, through and including the, uh, the recommendation and the application proceeding involving In Contact Inc. So moved. Second. Any discussion? Any objections? Hearing none, the motion passes unanimously. On behalf of the Law Bureau, it is recommended that the Commission adopt the recommendations on page 15 through and including the recommendation in the proceeding involving Citizens Telephone Company of Kecksburg. So moved. Second. Any discussion? Any objections? Hearing none, the motion passes unanimously. Should be noted on page 16 with regard to the Law Bureau recommendation in the proceeding involving First Energy Solutions uh, pass through charge or surcharge. That matter has been postponed until public meeting of May the 22nd. Turning now to the matter on behalf of the Office of Administrative Law Judge on page 17 of the public meeting agenda, we recommend the adoption of Judge Barnes's recommended decision in the proceeding involving Penn Estates Utilities, Inc. So moved. Second. Um, I simply want to make an oral statement here this morning to first uh, recognize Administrative Law Judge uh, Barnes for her due diligence in managing the sensitive wastewater case. The settlement agreement in front of us this morning, in my view, is very fair and balanced. The terms of the settlement agreement include a one-year stay-out provision and an increase in annual service revenues of 12.85% in lieu of what the company was requesting, a 23% uh, request. Now, the average wastewater customer in the service territory will see their bills increase from $41.26 per month to roughly $46.56 per month. This increase will allow not only the company to finance their continued capital improvements in new wastewater treatment systems, it will also, uh, the customer will be um, will be receiving the best of both worlds in this settlement. Uh, in addition, the company agrees to normalize rate case expenses rather than amortizing rate case expenses. 
And uh, again, upon my review, I believe that the settlement is in the public interest here this morning. It's balanced, and the concerns of the customers and the statutory interveners have been heard loud and clear by administrative law judge, the, by the administrative law judge's recommendation here this morning. So I just, again, I want to recognize Judge Barnes for her efforts. This was a very, uh, very complex case, and I think she did a, a very nice job balancing uh, the needs of the, of the citizens, or we'll say the consumers, and uh, heard loudly from the interveners in this case. So good outcome here this morning. Any further discussion? Any objections? Hearing none, the motion passes unanimously, noting my oral statement. That concludes the presentation of regular agenda items. Turning now to the carry-in agenda. On behalf of the Office of Special Assistance, on page one of the carry-in agenda, it is recommended that the commission adopt the recommendation with regard to the PPL petition for reconsideration in the storm damage expense rider proceeding. So moved. Second. Any discussion? Any objections? Hearing none, the motion passes unanimously. It is recommended that the commission adopt the staff recommendation to approve the settlement agreement and in the Duquesne Light Company general rate increase proceeding, that being a $48 million agreed upon settlement, as well as the severance of the Rider 18 issue. So moved. Second. Any discussion? Any objections? Hearing none, the motion passes unanimously. And on behalf of the Bureau of Technical Utility Services, on page two of the carry-in agenda, it is recommended that the commission uh, adopt the staff recommendation in the application proceeding involving uh, independent energy groups, uh, um, natural gas supply application. So moved. Second. Any discussion? Any objections? Hearing none, the motion passes unanimously. And on page three of the carry-in agenda, it is recommended that the commission adopt on behalf of the Law Bureau the recommendation in the proceeding involving the investigation of practices of paper invoice charges. So moved. Second. Any discussion? Any objections? Hearing none, the motion passes unanimously. Mr. Chairman, that completes the presentation of public meeting agenda items. Um, I believe we have no other matters to come before the commission until after we bang the gavel. And this morning, I'm going to recognize Vice Chairman Coleman, who is from Center County, Pennsylvania, to uh, recognize our, uh, uh, our esteemed young leader, future public utility commissioner, to bang this morning's gavel. Vice Chairman. And the winner is Alan Reed. Alan, come on up. You get a free year of electricity. <laughs> Brent? Ready? Okay. Don't hit me. Hit the. Hit the wall. <laughs> you can hit him really hard. Okay. Well done. Thank you. For a moment there, I thought it was Speaker Smith banging a gavel. But uh, uh, what a great day! And again, recognize uh, Alan for, uh, for for adjourning public meeting. And uh, we are officially adjourned. But I want to.